Hi, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to a discussion on efficient breathing for flute players. I want to look at how we best breathe in, how we exhale that breath out of our body and how we use our flute face or our flute embouchure to best control the release of that breath so that we can make music on the flute, which is what it's all about. Just to start with, I want to make a brief reference to this album. Tempestuous Trumpet, recorded in 1961 by Doc Severinsen and his orchestra. It was released on the Command label via Pickwick Records. It's somewhat of a legendary recording uh, amongst brass players in the know. It's an album that set Severinsen up to be the number regarded as the universally regarded as the number one trumpet player in New York in that era. And Doc went on to become the band leader of the Tonight Show Orchestra, which he led for some 25 years, very much in the public eye as the musical director for Johnny Carson during uh, that very lengthy stint on US nightly television. Doc was 34 years of age when he recorded Tempestuous Trumpet, that album. As at the date of recording this video in October 2016, Doc Severinsen is still very much alive and well, still practicing and playing his trumpet on a daily basis, giving concerts and performances and running clinics, taking part in podcasts and also over the last 10 years or so, designing his own line of specialist uh, custom trumpets, the Destino line of trumpets. Doc is a wonderful example of how if you learn to breathe correctly and play your instrument in an efficient um, manner, you can have a lifelong career playing music without hurting yourself in any way. So Doc's been playing the trumpet now for I think 80 years, um, a professional career that's expanded something like 75 years. Um, and I want to use a, a comment Doc made recently on a podcast that was recorded in the last 12 months where the interviewer asked Severinsen, look, based on your extraordinary success um, on the trumpet, what advice would you give uh, a wind instrumentalist insofar as the correct way to breathe for playing music on a wind instrument. Now Doc's analogy I think is fantastically simple but it really cuts to the core of efficient breathing. So Severinsen responded by saying well imagine that you were a swimmer standing on the starting blocks of a 50 metre Olympic size swimming pool just waiting for the starter to fire the starting gun for you to jump into that pool and swim underwater the length of the pool, so 50 metres underwater on one breath. And he sort of posed the question, if you were that swimmer, how do you think you would take that breath standing on the starting blocks? It's a wonderful question. I think the answer uh, is clear to all of us that, w that we would all take the biggest, best, deepest, fullest breath we could take prior to diving into that pool. And that's exactly what we should do when we play a wind instrument. The second part of the analogy is equally as strong. How would we release that air? How would we blow the bubbles out under the water across that 50 metre swim? Would we blow all the air out at the 10 or 15 meter mark, leaving our lungs completely empty, thinking we're going to swim the balance of the 30 or 40 meters with no air in our lungs. I mean, that's not going to work. Um, and it doesn't work when we're playing music on a wind instrument either. Most often when we're playing a song or reading a, a, a musical score, we're required to play phrases in, in two and three and four bar lengths, which might take, you know, eight to 12 seconds to play. Um, and to keep the continuity of the musical phrase, 
if we're taking a breath after every two seconds or whatever, um, it becomes as silly as me taking a breath right now after every word. I mean, that just doesn't make sense. It's not natural and, and it, it certainly is very off-putting for the person that we're trying to communicate to. So as a flute player, when we take the breath in, we breathe through our mouth, not through our nose. There are, a, there are occasions on a wind instrument when we do breathe through our nose, but the default breath is definitely through our mouth. We keep our throat as open as we can. And by that I mean, we think of if we sang a low note. Uh, think of the feeling if you sing that note right now. Think of the feeling in your throat when you are singing a low note. Uh, your throat will be big, wide and open. Open mouth, open throat. And if we think of this hand as being our our spine, our backbone, and this being the front of our body, with this knuckle here being our belly button. So this is our stomach area. This is our, our back. What we try and do is we try and push our tummy out when we breathe in. We push our belly button out. Now, I don't want to get involved in any way in a discussion on the medical side of it and what that means and, and which muscles we use. It's most often referred to as um, breathing using our diaphragm. All I want you to think about is, can you push your belly button out? Can you raise, can you, can you expand your tummy so that your belly button moves from its resting position out as far as, as you can move it. Now that might be one or two centimetres, there's no magic number. But the further we can expand our tummy out, the bigger the cavity inside of our body um, in which our lungs can expand. So if we want to fill our lungs up from the bottom up, if we push our tummy out, there's a little bit more room in our body for our lungs to take in more air without in any way us straining to take in that air. So the steps are open mouth, open throat, push our tummy out roughly where our belly button is and everything will happen very naturally. The air will fall into our lungs without us having to think about it. The only physical movement that we'll feel is us pushing our tummy out, like this. So I took in a maximum breath there by just one movement in my body, expanding my tummy, pushing my belly button out, and, and our bodies will look after everything else. Let's not get into a, a PhD discussion on what happens inside of our body. Basically, we've got a bigger internal space for our organs to live within, and our lungs have got more room to expand. Now, when I say maximum breath, yes, we could top that breath up further by sipping some more air in, maybe in one or two or three sips. Let's not get into that. We don't need to worry about that on the flute. 99 times out of 100, a good deep breath on the flute is going to get us right where we want to be. Okay, breathing that air back out of our body, if we do nothing and just let our body, so our belly button, move back into where it started which will provide some natural compression on our lungs, the air will come out of our body with the same amount of ease with which it fell in. So if I, I'm now going to take a deep breath in and immediately release that air without changing the shape of, of my mouth in any way. So here we go. So took about less than half a second for the air to come into my lungs. And, and about the same amount of time, about a half a second or so, for the air to, to fall back out of my lungs. That is of absolutely no use to us as, a, as an outward breath. Or if we're swimming underwater in the pool, we wouldn't get too far if we just let all of that air come straight back out in half a second from jumping in the pool. And certainly we won't get too far on the flute if all of our air in our lungs escapes in half a second. 
So this is where the flute face or the flute embouchure comes into play. Because we want to get all the air that we can into our lungs as efficiently and effortlessly as we can. And I've already explained the only effort is poke your belly button out. That's the only physical effort. Leave your throat open, let your air come in through the mouth, not the nose. Learn to push your tummy out. Everything else will happen naturally and efficiently. But on the way out, we need to restrict the hole with which the air can escape. And when we play the flute, that's exactly what our flute embouchure sets out to do. So you can see the hole in my mouth, and it's not a circular hole. It's a shape. It's like a, an elliptical shape. It's an oval shape is much smaller than this. And hence, the same amount of air that I breathed in in half a second, I can very easily um, hold as a breath across the, the flute hole for eight seconds or more without any effort at all. And just to demonstrate that to you, I've got my trusty metronome here. If I set it on 60 beats a minute, and I recommend you do this at home too, and I recommend you initially start trying to hold your uh, tone on the flute from that big air intake for maybe four seconds. Even that might be too long for you to start on. But let's start with four seconds here. So, okay, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you can play that game with yourself of as almost like an isometric exercise, a, a, a lung control exercise. But remember, all you're really controlling is not the air in your lungs. You've taken that deep breath. Your lungs are full of air. Your lips become almost like the nozzle on a hose. And depending on how big or small the gap is in your lips, will have an enormous bearing, a one-to-one -one relationship bearing, with how long you will be able to sustain a, a note on a wind instrument, on your flute, with the volume of air that you've taken in your lungs. So what you can do is use your metronome, set it on 60 beats a minute, one beat a second, and say, well, I'm now going to try and hold that note for five seconds, or then six seconds, then seven seconds, then eight seconds, and so on. I'll just demonstrate now just taking that breath and holding it for eight seconds. But this is really up to you. There's, it's, it's not a race to see how quickly you can do this. It's really a matter of like swimming under the pool, under the water, like Doc Severinsen said, that full journey on the one breath, controlled release of the air, efficient use of the air that you have in your lungs. So I'll just hold this for eight seconds for you. And that's very comfortable for me, but that might not be comfortable for you. You might need to take several weeks or even several months to get to the point where uh, just blowing a tone on the flute is comfortable to hold for eight seconds. Remember when I first took that breath and released it, my, my full lungs of air only lasted less than half a second. By introducing the correct flute embouchure, and it's the same embouchure, by the way, whether you're playing the alto flute. Or even the little tiny piccolo flute. It's the same flute embouchure that we use on all of the flutes. And it's the same concept. Okay, I hope you've got something out of that. The efficient intake of air the efficient release of natural release of the air and thinking of your flute face or your embouchure like the nozzle on a hose, a garden hose tap, where you can restrict the amount of, in that case, water, but in this case, air that is coming out of your mouth. And as you saw in this, this clip, 
you can easily go from half a second to eight seconds with very little effort and, and, and using your air very efficiently. Don't hesitate to contact me via my website www.brianhayes.biz.biz or send me an email info at brianhayes.biz. I'm more than happy to interact with people interested in improving their playing on the, the flute or on any of the instruments that I play and teach as a multi-instrumentalist um, and happy to conduct Skype lessons or answer some basic queries via email. Bye for now.